It's all about humanity. And here we are, people. It is show number 600. Oh, my Lord. YouTube is not receiving enough video. Oh, my Lord. Is this thing going to work? Show live stream number 600. And is it going to let me down? I flipping well hope not. So I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. This is the UK Bitcoin Master Bullish Bitcoin channel, the BBC. You can see it down there. I am Brian, the UK Bitcoin Master. It is the 7th of March, 2024, and this is show number 600. Now, it is, um, I think, YouTube video 649 or 650, but it is live stream number 600. So I think we should have a little bit of a celebration, shall we? There you go. That is it. Welcome, everyone. Smash the like button. Tweet this out. Do the normal stuff. Would really appreciate it. Um, share me where you're listening. If you're on the podcast, thank you for being here. And I'm really sorry if you are listening on the podcast that you're not seeing the visuals. Maybe come over at some point and check out um, the YouTube live stream. Get into the community chat with the regulars that are in there and uh, become part of the UK Bitcoin Master fam. That'd be superb. Um, if you're new to all of this, it's so important you do your own research. Don't listen to me, whatever you do. I'm just some crazy Brit that uh, April the 18th, I believe, 2018, I went live for the, or I did, I, I, I put myself out there on YouTube, I should say, with uploads for the very first time. They were absolutely horrific when you look back on them, but there we are, six years have gone. So I'm just a regular guy from the UK that wants to talk twice a week uh, about Bitcoin. And for some reason, people want to come and listen to me, and I have no clue why. Do your own research. I would encourage you all, if you're new, to go to ukbitcoinmaster.com. That is where all my videos are. Bitcoin interviews, that is where all the interviews are. I think over 80 over there already. Uh, and then last on this screen, not your keys, not your coins. Please don't leave any coins on exchanges because you never know when another shoe is going to drop and you're going to lose your coins. That's so important. Um, I would encourage you all to go into the show notes, click on the link tree link. That'll take you here. And that way you can then follow me somewhere else other than just YouTube. I've had this channel taken down once already uh, for no reason, and it could definitely be taken down again. So it's worth following me. Uh, this goes out on Rumble uh, the next day after the live stream. So perhaps follow me over there on Rumble. I haven't got the streaming set up, set up so that it live streams to Rumble um, at the same time as YouTube because I just don't have the bandwidth. It's as simple as that. If you're not on the Orange Pill app, get on it. It is building the social layer of Bitcoin. There's a link there if you're not on it where you can get 10,000 free sats. Just sign up using an email, then download the app and log in with that email and you're going to get yourself 10,000 free sats. Why wouldn't you? A uh, very quick shout out to the show sponsor, The Best of Exmoor. If you're looking for a couple of nights, one night, a week, two weeks, a month, whatever, and you want to find out what it's like to holiday in Exmoor National Park in the UK, providing the weather's okay, of course, uh, then do check uh, this website out, whether you're looking for beachside properties, properties to sleep two, to sleep 21, uh, animal-friendly holidays, they're all there. If you're outside of the UK and you want to know what part of the UK it is, there is the red circle just appeared. That is Exmoor National Park, a beautiful part of the country. So definitely worth scanning the QR code that will come up in a moment and at least having a look at it, people. Um, I love this because Chris, who reached out to me, who runs Best of Exmoor, is a Bitcoiner. He's been, been down the rabbit hole as long as I have, and has been stacking as long as I have. So he is a Bitcoiner. Top left of that um, um, image there, you can see Bitcoin accepted. Um, so whether you want to pay for a holiday in Bitcoin, whether you want to pay for a holiday in currency, and also get a code using my discount code, I would encourage you to check them all out. OK, so uh, there is one more page I think I've got to bring up. Ah, uh, Yeah, this one here. We have 41 days to the Bitcoin halving. Do you know how significant that is? 
I'm not showing any news articles today, but the news articles that I've been showing, have they not been talking about how BlackRock alone are trying to suck out 14 times more than the daily Bitcoin being produced? Never mind Fidelity and all the others. People, when this goes from 900 coins a day to, to 450 coins, if that demand stays the same, that has to drive the price in an upward direction. So um, if you haven't got any Bitcoin, if you don't feel you've got enough Bitcoin, I would certainly encourage you to get hold of some and do that right now. Uh, very quickly, you can see, uh, in fact, just before we went live, we were flirting with 68K. I was rather hoping that through the 600th show, we would smash the all-time high again, good and proper. And I, I saw it creeping up as I was prepping the show and thought, can we, can't we, can we? Now we're down to 67.5 now, but it's okay. You know, all the naysayers that said it will never get back to its all-time high. And we've already fleetingly passed that once last week. And I'm telling you, when this thing goes, we will cruise past the all-time high of 2021. And then all hell's going to break loose. The key here for those that are new is the higher the price goes, the less satoshis you get for your dollar. Right now, you're getting 1,481 sats for the dollar. So don't let anybody tell you that you can't afford to buy Bitcoin because you can buy a fraction of a coin for a dollar, $10, $100, uh, you choose. And then before we get into this, this one, <clears throat> if you're not aware of it, look, this is the top assets by market cap. Clearly, gold is up there. Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Saudi, Aramco, Amazon, Alphabet, Google, Silver. Look at Bitcoin. It is ready to flip silver. That is going to happen. And then it is going to chase the rear end of Google. Can you imagine when Bitcoin, not if, when Bitcoin flips Google? This is crazy, people. This is going to happen. And if you look at the top, and I can't, I'm not saying it's going to happen. This is just me sounding off. You've got to understand that. But I've been around this thing seven years come May, and I've seen it all. And I've seen the scammers that appear when we go on a bull run. I've seen the ICO craze. I've seen the, you know, the, the block size wars in 2017. I've seen the, the forks of Bitcoin that failed, B, B trash and BSV and B gold and all the others. Just know this thing's happening and you need to stack while you still got the chance because you'll still have a chance, but you're going to get lay, way less sats for your money. So right now, it, they're all talking that we will flip gold's market cap when nobody knows. But look, we are not a million miles away. And if we flip gold, we are bigger. Bitcoin is bigger than Microsoft, Apple, Saudi Aramco, Amazon, Google. It's coming, people. And I find that so flipping exciting. OK, so. Before we go into a few videos I'm going to run for you guys and talk about, let's see, as always, who we have in my chat. The regulars are in. I'll whiz down the list. John G, MS Bit ETH, Mike G Squared, MW from the Spanish Islands, Elaine, Mrs. UK from downstairs. Uh, Chaz is with us. Matt Underhill from the Bitcoin book. Uncle Hodler, Dodgy Bob, Vinny Lee, Dr. Rob Davis, Barefoot Barry, Stuart Griffiths, Sam Wright. Where uh, Mike Dooley, I think I've shouted you already. Mike is in the house. Yorkie Bitcoiner. D -d 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 Cliff Morley. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, welcome, everyone. If I haven't given you a shout out and you want one live, you just got to type in UK Bitcoin Master, then a message, and it will light up. Not for you, for me. Bright orange on my big screen behind the, the um, camera, and I'll gladly give you a shout out. Please, 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 please. Can I ask you all just to take the time, Glim Payne, welcome, to hit the like button whilst it's on your mind now, because one of the biggest things you can do to drive, help drive adoption, which will ultimately drive your number go up of your holdings, is the likes. The more likes we get, the longer this stays up there on YouTube, the more regular noobs that are just coming across Googling Bitcoin find my channel instead of some scammy channel where they are 
pushing pump and dumps, and then those innocent people lose all their funds. So help me <clears throat> to help those noobs and ultimately help yourself by number go up. UK Bitcoin Farmer, welcome. So, okay, what are we going to cover on show number 600? Let me do that. Simple. <clears throat> um, I didn't go to the conference in Madeira, Portugal. Um, I wish I had it done, <clears throat> especially with the A-list of people that were there, but I didn't. But I did watch the live streams, and they were impactful. They were educational. They were inspiring. To see Jeff Booth shedding a tear on the stage was um, epic. Sailor, Nat Brunel, Larry Lepard. There was just BTC sessions. There was just a whole raft of Bitcoiners that delivered incredible content on that Madeira conference. So what I decided to do for show number 600 is pick up on a couple of videos, two or three videos that I thought that you guys might find useful if you haven't um, I'm trying, trying to find it over there. If you haven't watched the live streams, if with the best will in the world you plan to, but you never get round to it, and then they get swallowed up with other videos that I might do and others might do, etc., so that you can get a flavour for what went on. Now, of the three videos I'm going to run, <clears throat> excuse me, two out of the three have been guests on my show, and the middle one, the number three. I would love to get on my show, but many people have tried to reach out to this guy and just not getting there, and maybe I never will, but you never know. If you've got any connections with Sailor, uh, anyone that you know knows Sailor, anyone that knows someone that knows someone that knows somebody that has a connection, I would love to talk to Michael Sailor on my show. But that said, Bitcoin Meister, welcome. Good to see you. So um, the first video I'm going to run, um, maybe if you're new to all of this, maybe if you're not as deep down the rabbit hole as I am and others are, you may hear me say this name and think, who the heck was that? Yeah, Jack Mellors was fantastic. Who the, he who the heck is this guy? Um, I would encourage you to go to BitcoinInterviews.com and watch my interview with Eric Kaysen. Now, Eric Kaysen is an, an anarchist. He believes that everything is corrupt. You know, we need to separate um, money and state. You know, we need to take down governments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, look, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think that this is going to play out how it's going to play out. So I'm not on either side. But he did make some good statements that I want to bullet point here. Um, Morris Thompson, UK, he says we have a real chance now to create a new and better world for our children and descendants. And we need to take that very seriously. And I couldn't agree more. What you've got to do, listen, I'm in this for number go up. Everyone's in this for number go up. But I think there's something bigger at play here where over time we can um, make the world a better place by shrinking governments to serve the people instead of governments controlling the money we take back the control of the money and give it to the people, that type of thing. And governments will either need to conform, comply, change to serve us, or they will wither and die, if that makes sense. So that's where he's coming from. He says, we live in a world where everything we are and do is drummed into us, is taught into us. We're taught this. We are we are just actually pummeled with these you know, narratives and uh, sales pitches on social media, etc., and it's all drummed into us. He explains it much better um, in a minute from the day we were born. But now with Bitcoin, we can question that. And as Adam Meister in the chat always taught me, you know, question everything. You know, personal responsibility is the new count counterculture. Don't be a tree. You know, don't just take the narrative question it. And this is what Eric is saying here um, as well. He said, you know, before Bitcoin, we could never really question. Well, you could question stuff. Of course you could. But now we can hold them all accountable. He says we can now choose the path we take and break away from the systems and create a new Bitcoin system with our privacy intact, etc., etc. So let's go over and listen to this clip from Eric Kaysen because I personally thought it was there was a lot more to it. I had to um, 
take out a few expletives, but um, he does make some really, really valid points. So here's Eric Kaysen. Since World War II, the trajectory of the world has been one of the entire global economy has been committed towards governments and statism and fundamentally war economies. And that's been the development. And we've had no choice in it. We've had to willingly give up our taxes or go to jail. And there hasn't been any meaningful way to resist that we can now actually actively engage with. And I think it's very important that, particularly with seeing how wild stuff is getting, there's an opportunity for us to secure for our children and their children and, and onward a totally new type of system, not only of money and wealth, but fundamentally of politics itself by using these tools. And that, I really want you guys to understand that. Because like, th this isn't about number goes up, this is about making sure that your children don't live in a technological panopticon where the very concept of privacy and freedom is foreign to them. So please take it very seriously. Amen. Amen. We are taught history. You are taught things. Being taught something is fundamentally different from questioning. You were taught that money was the right way and that it worked right. That you were taught that you're supposed to work at a job and that you're supposed to save money. You were taught that you're supposed to get a home, have kids, send them to school. These were all things that they, you were told to do and that was banked into you. The difference with Bitcoin is when it comes up and you finally scratch your head enough and start questioning it, and then it finally clicks and you go, oh, I, there's something different here, I'm learning. You, now you're actually doing the real process of teaching yourself, which is questioning. And when you start questioning things, that finally gives you access to actually challenge the narratives that you've been, because for the very first time in your life, you're actually starting to learn things on your own. And that only comes through the action of questioning, and that's the flaw in history. Most of us are taught a certain version of history, which is not necessarily true. Whereas when you question what history has been, that allows for you to go through the actions that actually has you come to understand what the truth is and not the narrative that you have been given. And so I think that that's a really important thing that Bitcoin imparts to us is to understand how to actually question things in a meaningful way so that we can come to the conclusions for ourselves of what actually is true. There are two distinct paths for our future. One is going to be technological fascism. You will have no freedom, you will have no privacy, your government will know everything about you and they will know every single cent that you spend. Or you can choose to resist it and fight back with new technologies like Bitcoin and Noster so that you can have private communication. You can use cryptography to protect yourself and you can free yourself and your children from needing to repeat this cycle repeatedly. We all have a responsibility here to actually go talk about what this technology is and it is not about number go up or about post whatever crazy shit you want online. This is about us being able to actually freely have dialogue with one another about the future that we want to have, but it's going to take a very strong commitment from each one of us to talk to our friends, our families, our associates and coworkers about why this thing is so important and you don't need to pay attention to something other than just number go up, but more about the freedom that it entails. Um, on a personal level, because I've interviewed him, by the way, Mike, is Eric Kaysen. Um, go to Bitcoin interviews and find my interview with him. Um, a really deep thinker, actually. And he comes out with some good stuff that I just couldn't possibly deliver what he's just delivered. But when you listen to everything he says, you know, he makes a valid point. One of the points I want to make is this is great that we're front running all the institutions. This is great that we are in Bitcoin when, you know, 90 odd percent of the world just know the name, but know what it is, etc., but I also think there is much more at play here than number go up. This is going to be uh, going to go down in history as the time that, you know, money was taken from the state, the time that money could move across borders without a third party intermediary involved. And, you know, I'm not going to be here. Maybe many of us on this call won't be here when this all plays out over time. Kason, C-A-S-O-N, Eric, E-R-I-K. Sorry about that. I can see the chat going on there. Um, great guy, in my opinion, and uh, I really enjoyed what he had to say. The second video. Now, I'm going to call this guy a friend. We, we DM a lot on Twitter. Um, when my wife was unwell, he was messaging me saying, How Elaine, how's Elaine getting on? How's Elaine getting on? Uh, I met him in Scotland. Um, he's a great guy, a gold bug. 
but now he's come over to the light side and leaving the dark side behind, as you will hear. And you probably know who I'm talking about. That's Lawrence or Larry Lepard. Um, he is a gold fund manager who saw Bitcoin. Uh, he's got some great things to say. He talks about, he starts off with a great football or footy joke, which is quite good. Um, he says he's an old guy who saw the light. He also talks of how most are missing this and gave a first-hand experience in this clip of his own, how he missed something when his friend was talking about DOS, you know, DOS for computers, and how it was going to be absolutely huge. And he bought in, he sold at a profit and bought a condo and totally realizes that was the wrong thing to do. Hence, when Bitcoin goes up, don't sell your Bitcoin. Um, and he draws this comparison with Bitcoin. So let's have a listen to this one from Larry Lepard coming up right now. First of all, let me just say, uh, somebody pinched me. I mean, it's like <laughs> I'm a club payer for Bedford and they say, let's go scrimmage with Messi and Ronaldo. I'm like, what the f*** am I doing here? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just an old fart gold guy. Um, and I view my role in this whole thing as converting gold guys into Bitcoin because they get half the problem. They understand the monetary debasement issue. They just got the wrong tool, as Michael says. And thank God Bitcoin came along and gave us a much stronger and better weapon which uh, I've increasingly embraced. And of course, now I'm a full-fledged maxi and, and out of gold or getting out of gold. But, uh, it, you know, it, I've seen in my base probably 50-50 conversion. Some people are just too dyed in the wool, can't get over the physicality issue, yep. don't understand the future, don't want to take the time, don't want to do the work. But I've seen others who've completely flipped. A uh, notable one recently was Chris Irons of Quote the Raven, who was a very smart guy and understood the debasement issue, but was anti-Bitcoin because he hadn't done the work. And I just kept working on him and working on him and working on him to do the work. And now he's a raving maximalist. It's really fabulous. So it goes both ways. Some guys get converted and some don't. And, um, you know, but we just got to keep chipping away. I think Michael's point from his brilliant speech earlier of it's incumbent upon all of us to spread the word because this is the solution to all our problems. You know, in the early 80s, I started my business career. The IBM PC was introduced in 19. Have a listen to this. And I, uh, Microsoft came public in 1986, came public at 14 times trailing and it's growing 40% a year. And at the time, if you were in the computer business, you were at IBM or Prime or DEC or Wang. And, uh, you know, the mini computer was really the thing. And, and a lot of people regarded these PCs as toys. And I think it's an interesting analogy that back at that point in time, um, software was regarded as risky because it was ones and zeros and people didn't see that there could be any value in it. They were saying, how can there be value in the software? It's just written, you know, it's code, it has no value. The, the values in the disk drives, the values at IBM, the values in these hardware computers, people who are making real stuff. Sounds kind of familiar, right? And I recall go a little further back, wind it back, I'm, I'm, I'm at business school and I'm with my business school roommate. He's with his roommate from Harvard College, a guy named Steve Ballmer. We're walking along the Charles River and Balmer says, we've got this thing called DOS, and the entire world is going to need this thing. The entire world. Everybody is going to have it. It's going to be a part of everybody's life. This is going to be a multi-billion dollar corporation. I Let me stop it there. And how many people at the time thought, yeah, 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 we'll see. You know, that is hindsight, is it not? And I don't want anybody on my show, my chat, to regret with hindsight, the drum about Bitcoin, and they didn't do anything about it, and then they missed out on the gains that Larry's just about to talk about. I looked at him, I thought he was nuts, but then it kind of hit me, he wasn't nuts. It was the base layer of the technology that allowed the PC to grow. And 40 years later, it is ubiquitous, and Balmer's obviously a billionaire, and Microsoft's a multi-billion dollar company. I mean, I bought it at the time in, in 86 when it came public, sold it three years later to buy a condo, it was a mistake. The split adjusted price is six cents and the stock trades at, you know, $290 today. So it was, you know, 47,000 times your money or 4,700 times your money. 4,700 times your money. 4,700. He got 1,000 wrong, but 4,700x the initial investment. What would that do to your Bitcoin for your descendants if that... 4,700 4, 4, x your holdings right now. Don't take this seriously, people. The point I'm trying to make is that Bitcoin is the same thing and people don't understand it. They don't understand that it is the, the base layer of money and it is going to absorb the entire monetary system.
given a long enough time frame, at least in my opinion. It, that was my thumbnail. Bitcoin is coming for everything. Now, it's not coming for everything this year or even this decade, people. But slowly but surely, in my seven years in Bitcoin, I've watched it eat its way into systems, talked about more on TV, ETFs have come out. It's already happening as I don't think I've got this clip here, but somebody was saying, you know, what is the future going to look like? And I think it was Sailor said, we're already living in it. It's already playing out. Bram, Bram VDB, welcome. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I gave you a shout out, so good to see you in the house. Um, it's already playing out, but there's no switch. You don't switch it on or switch it off. And then the new systems here, there is this gradual transition. And if you've got any type of vision, you will see this thing playing out already. I clearly do see it. The last clip is from Michael Saylor, who I would love to talk to on my show. I really would. Before I talk about that, way, way more viewers, according to my monitor, than likes. So if you haven't hit the like button, I implore you, go do it right now. And don't forget, please, so important for the algorithm. But Sailor, he did a talk about Bitcoin for you, the individual, you and your family, what it means, etc. You know what sailors like? He talks forever. So I just had to find a little clip from it to that inspires me. And hopefully it will inspire you as well. And he talks to the Madeira, Madeira audience about their families and how Bitcoin can impact and change their family's future. He says Bitcoin can support your family for generations. And he gives a great analogy as well as to how people lose their wealth over a handful of generations. So let's listen in uh, to this one, the last one, with Mr. Saylor. I invite you all to think about your relationships and the nature of your relationships before you discovered Bitcoin. And then think about how they changed after you discovered Bitcoin. Right? I, I just see it as like, it's like coming out, out of the darkness into the light. Uh, let me stop it there. I'm only talking from a personal level now, okay? But I've gone through my entire life trying to achieve, try, trying to improve the future for my family. And each time I tried, I got somewhere, but I got beat down again. And then like anybody else, you look at what you have coming into the family in terms of, in my case, pounds, what is going out in terms of the bills that are constantly going up? And you feel like you're on a treadmill. You're, on a, you're in a rat race and there's no escape from the rat race. Bitcoin comes along. It is little wonder the energy goes through the roof because all of a sudden you can now start believing again and believing that you can give your family a better future. And, that, and that's why I see Bitcoin as empowerment and hope for the individual. But for the family, what does it mean to the family? It is a foundation to support your family for generations. Right? What, what is the tragedy of the family? The tragedy of a family is when you run your family on toxic money and you build your family on defective assets and defective property. I'll give you a classic cliche tragedy. Our family came to this country. My great-grandfather bought this farm. My grandfather farmed this land. My father farmed this land. Now I can't pay the taxes on it. We got to sell it and all move into like apartments. Why? Because property is a defective way. It was the best idea 200 years ago. I get it. But if you actually own a thousand acres and then someone comes in and creates a state and a mayor gets elected and the mayor decides to spend lots of money on whatever, and Waste. they raise your taxes and raise them again and raise them a third time. Pretty soon, the people with the farm can't pay the taxes, and then the government decides that you're the bad guy. They take all your land and eject you or evict you. You know, and Maybe they don't do it directly. Maybe first you mortgage the farm, and then you can't pay the mortgage, and then the bank seizes your property. And that's a tragedy. And what is the tragedy? The tragedy is you built your family on a defective asset. You need a, and a defective money. Not your fault. I mean, look, you go back a million years, people are dying at age 28. They have no antibiotics. We didn't know that sugar was toxic. Our teeth fell out. 
We didn't know how to, how to deal with a pneumonia infection. You get cut, you die. You know, someone drinks water, it kills them. You eat the wrong food. You get dysentery, you get cholera. No, you know, whatever. The, hu the history of humanity is people dying and suffering because of toxicity. And the promise of technology is first we come up with the science to figure out it's toxic, right? The microscope let us look into the blood and realize that there were bacteria that were killing us, right? You need the instrument, then you need the understanding, then you solve the problem, right? That, that is the story of civilization. That, that is how humans progress. Well, with families, a lot of families struggle, and, and the economic struggle is a defective economic strategy. Bitcoin gives you that foundation. And you can use it to protect your family, relocate anywhere, change your career, create a legacy, accumulate more assets, accumulate wealth, plan for the future. Yeah. You know, if you asked me, if before Bitcoin, if you asked me, how are you gonna, how are you gonna create or, or fund your foundation for the next 100 years? I would have said something like, I guess I give all my money to Wall Street and I hire some good money managers. And 70 years from now, the grandson of someone that I hired today might go to college, figure out what to do and, and day trade or shuffle my money around so I don't lose it. May I, that's the best idea. It's not a good idea, right? right? That's how the Rockefellers do it, right? But, but you know, the, what you'll see is that 100 years after someone actually accumulates some wealth, the, the money's generally gone 99% mm -hmm. of the time. And what Bitcoin offers to family is the ability to actually plan for your great-granddaughter and think that maybe there'll be some support for them and uh, no one is going to take it from them. Uh, look, I don't know what your take is on that, but, you know, I realized this very early on that Bitcoin, being in part of Bitcoin, being in Bitcoin, learning about Bitcoin, to me is way bigger than number go up. Am I excited when number goes up? Of course, my family's wealth goes up. But to me, there is something way, way, way bigger at play here that I'm running alongside number go up. I'm mindful of it and I'm very interested when people talk about it. So, I hope you guys got something from it like I did. And if you didn't, I can't help that. Uh, for me, those three videos I found pretty interesting, uh, pretty profound. And that is why I'm so excited to be in Bitcoin almost seven years after I first got that call about Bitcoin. Okay. Smash the like button, people. Still way more viewers than likes. I'd really appreciate it. Okay. So we're going back quickly over to the desktop. Um, I found this quote from Einstein, weak people revenge, strong people forgive, intelligent people ignore. Which one are you people? I know which one I am. I class myself as intelligent enough to not get into squabbles and spats with people that serves nothing but just waste precious energy. I'm very much in the camp of instead of beating up on the old system, trying to tear it down, I want to be part of the people that are building the new system so that more people see it, come over to it, and then the old system dies naturally. Uncle Hodler, way to go. We are heading for 100k, dude. Remember? <laughs> So, if you want to support me, there you go. There's some SATS addresses. You don't have to. Honestly, don't feel obliged. But people have asked, well, how can we tip you? If you want to keep your SATS and buy me a coffee, uh, that's proverbially, of course, the QR code, you can buy a cup of coffee from anywhere in the world if you feel it is worthy of it. But, again, you don't have to. But that is the show, the 600th live stream can you believe this? Think about this. 600 live streams, okay? That has taken me close to six years. So I might not even be live streaming when, you know, if I was going to get to 1,000. So I'm going to celebrate each 100 live stream round number. And that is this one. On the 7th of March, 2024, we hit the 600 live stream. So it is my show. Humor me one last time.
There you go, people. Thank you for joining. Please share it where you're watching or listening. Please do, before you leave, hit like if you haven't already. It is so important that you go back into the show after it's finished. Refresh your browser and leave a comment because that really does... You know, we keep saying spank the YouTube algorithm, but I don't want to keep nicking other people's phrases. I just want this video to stay current for longer so more regular people that are just deciding they should investigate Bitcoin, when they Google it, they might come across my video, find it from, from somebody that just tells it as it is, no agenda, just twice a week going live, that's all I try to do. So thanks for sharing number 600 live stream with me. Much appreciated. Uh, whatever you are doing, I wish you a great morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, after tomorrow, have a superb weekend. Uh, come back and join me on Monday, 6 p.m. London, where I'll do my best to inspire you yet again. But for now, that is it. If you read this, what does this say? It says, HODL. I believe the art of, I can't quite reading, hodling Bitcoin without the um, intent of selling. Hoddle your Bitcoin. I'm done. Social media links. Catch you all on Monday.